Hi, I'm Alexa from Chicago. Please like and subscribe. I think I decided when I was born that I liked my mom way more than my dad. She and I were always super close. Mom owned a lovely bookshop in the neighborhood that had been in the family for generations. And ever since I was a little kid, it was my favorite place to be. But my twin sister, Bailey, was always closer to dad, and I didn't know why. If there was a prize for the messiest, most irresponsible man on the planet, he'd surely win. And I was allergic to mess. Daddy, you left your muddy boots over my white shoes again. Are you saying something, honey? I can't hear you. Maybe you would if you stopped playing the video game. Shut up, you're so annoying. Can't you let us have some fun, you robot? I threw my shoe at Bailey when she said that, but I couldn't do the same to dad, cause he was my dad. He just worked some odd part-time jobs, and the rest, he spent at home playing video games and being messy. But once when I was in first grade, he really went too far. He took Bailey and me to the park, and while we were on the swings, he went off to play football with some boys. Bailey and I didn't realize how much time had gone by till it started getting dark. We looked around for dad, but we couldn't find him anywhere. Alexa, I, I don't know the way back home. I don't either, but it's okay. We have each other, we'll be fine. I suddenly remembered the park was close to mom's bookstore, and I took Bailey's hand and made my way there. Mom was just closing up and she was shocked to see us. She took us home furiously, and we found dad sitting on the couch with his muddy boots, looking totally unbothered. Hurry up, ladies. Don't let the big man starve. Dinner time. He didn't even realize he'd left us at the park? Mom and dad got into the biggest fight ever. And the next day, dad packed up his bags and left, saying he was moving in with his mom. And well, he never visited or came back. Bailey was super upset, but I was secretly relieved and mom seemed happier too. Good riddance, men were the worst. Growing up, I even avoided talking to boys my age. I was certain they were just all messy and careless like dad. Like once in fifth grade, the teacher made a boy sit next to me for a class activity and he was a complete chatterbox. Worse, he messed up the order of all my markers. Dude, can't you see that the pink cap doesn't go with the green marker? Ma'am, where can I find a no boys class? <laughs> it's not possible, Alexa. You'll have to learn to get along with everybody. Yes, even the boys. The boy grinned at me and I grabbed a marker and scribbled all over his face. The teacher called my mom and I got a bunch of lectures, but nothing could change my mind. Boys were icky and I hated them. Soon after, I discovered something that really interested me, acting. I joined the drama club and there I found myself fighting for the lead roles every year with a girl named Lily. I mostly beat her to them and obviously she hated me. By the time we were in high school, all the boys knew I wouldn't care to talk with them. So they stopped trying, but Lily wouldn't stop annoying me about it. Who are you gonna go to prom with, your cat? Do you stay away from the boys because you know you're ugly and no one will like you? Once I walked into the locker room as she was changing and she shrieked, OMG, are you trying to get a peek at me? I know you're into girls, but don't even think about me. Yikes, no. Even if I was into girls, I have good taste, Lily. But she spread rumors around the school that I secretly liked her and was spying like a creep when she was changing. Why don't you go and prove her wrong? Go on, just talk to a boy. I'd rather sprinkle cat litter on broccoli and eat that. <laughs> Yuck, you're a savage and so weird. Yeah, Bailey was nothing like me. She was really popular with the guys and she was always dating one. And I was always afraid she'd end up choosing someone exactly like dad. Once she was getting ready to go out with a boy, I knew it was a jerk, but she wouldn't listen to me. So I had to do something myself. That evening, I opened the door when he knocked. So, you're Mark? No, wait, she said he's hot. Are you Shane? Uh, no, 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 he comes on a motorbike every time. You must be the rich donkey she was talking about. What, she said that? And who are all these guys? I don't know, maybe you should ask Peter. He and Bailey have been really close lately. He got pissed and left. And when Bailey found out, she was furious. Now you're spoiling my chances too? Okay. What's up with you and boys? Don't you find them cute and fun? I find them useless and annoying. 
And I don't know why you're dying to be with one. You're too young anyway. Just stay away from them. But she'd never do that. One evening, I realized that I'd left some important notes in my locker, and I had to go back to school to get them. Just then, I heard a beautiful voice from the boy's locker room. I took a peek through the door and saw someone singing along with his guitar. It was Ryan, the quiet millionaire who joined school a week ago and had all the girls drooling. I stood there quietly and continued to listen until he stopped and looked right at me. So, do you like it? Oh God, he saw me. It didn't make my ears bleed, so I guess it was all right. You're the famous man-hater, aren't you? I'm flattered to have you as a fan, but uh, I'll have to give you my autograph another time. I don't have a pen right now. Oh, that's too bad. I want to cry, but I've left my hanky at home. I'd offer you mine, but it's full of boogers. Anyway, what are you doing here so late? I got bored and decided to find my Prince Charming here at school. And you? Same reason. I was waiting for someone as pretty as you to secretly listen to me as I sing. So, is this the part where we fall in love and start dating? Uh, no. I think we should get married right away and have kids. Suddenly, I noticed his boots. They were covered with mud. You know, there's a reason I stay away from boys, and I'm certain you're no different. With that, I walked away. This Ryan seemed really full of himself. And to my dismay, I found out a few days later that he was being paired with me as the lead in the school play. But he seemed more disappointed than me. Ma'am, can't we choose someone else to play the heroine's part? What's your problem? Why are you trying to get me out of the play? Because I don't want to play the part with a girl who's allergic to boys. We'll have no chemistry. I don't have to like you to be good at acting. I can fake chemistry. Uh, there's a kissing scene. You sure you're up for it? Yeah, I'm a professional, and we don't need to practice it. We can just do it on the day of the play. Fine by me. I'm an expert anyway. We started rehearsing soon with Lily as my understudy, but her main role seemed to be flirting with Ryan, and he was just as annoying as any boy I'd ever met. He was late for rehearsals, he was always eating on set and making a mess, and he had to take a hundred breaks. But I had to admit, he was a good actor and was perfect for the part. A few days later, we were doing a dress rehearsal, and soon after wearing my costume, my back really started to itch. I somehow made it through my part and then rushed to the dressing room. I looked at my back in the mirror, at the huge, ugly burn mark I'd had since I'd been in an accident when I was eight years old. The costume's material had really irritated my scar, and it was all red and itchy. I took a picture in the mirror to send to my skin doctor, and then quickly changed into my clothes. But as I picked up my phone again, I realized that I'd sent the picture to frickin' Ryan. Oh my God. Feeling panicked, I texted him that I sent the picture by mistake, but he never replied. I just slipped out and headed home, feeling really worried. I was certain that jerk would show it to everyone, especially Lily. But the next day when I went to school, no one was looking at me weirdly or talking about me. No one brought it up at all. Later, I spotted Ryan by himself in the hallway, and I walked over to him. Hey, listen, thank you for not sharing that picture with anyone. I know I'm an ugly freak. What picture? The one I sent you yesterday? I'm pretty sure you didn't. See our chat? No picture here. He looked up at me and smiled, and I found myself smiling back. Wow, that's the first time I've seen you smiling. I don't think you should do that. It's not a great look on you. I just rolled my eyes and walked away. Okay. He wasn't a jerk, but he was still annoying. But it was nice of him to pretend he didn't receive the picture to not embarrass me. When the day of the play finally came, I was super excited. Our performances were going really smoothly. Well, until the kissing scene. Uh, what are you doing? You're supposed to kiss me now. Yeah, I know that. I'm just getting ready. It's just a kiss. Kiss me, Alexa. Fine. I put my hands on his face and my heart was racing. As our lips touched, I felt something I'd never felt before, and I was kind of disappointed when he pulled away and started saying his next dialogue. Back at home, Bailey couldn't stop teasing me about the kiss and our chemistry on stage, which I completely denied and slammed the door in her face. But I couldn't stop thinking about the kiss all night. Was I catching feelings for Ryan? But the next morning, I forgot all about it when I went down for breakfast and found mom crying. Mom, what's wrong? What happened? I'm going to lose the bookstore. It turned out that mom had taken a big loan a while back from an investment company to keep the bookstore running. But lately, 
She hadn't been able to make the payments on time, and now the company was demanding that she pay it immediately, and the investment company belonged to Lily's dad. I'll have to sell the bookstore. It's not been doing well for a while, and I'm just not making enough. But mom, you love that bookstore. Everyone in the neighborhood loves it. It's been around for 30 years. There has to be a way we can save it. I don't think there is, honey. I felt really heavy-hearted when I went to school that day. I was sitting alone on the bleachers at recess when suddenly Ryan joined me. What's up with your face today? And to my horror, I started to cry. I buried my face in my arms as I sobbed, and I felt Ryan putting his arm around me. Hey, what's going on? Do you want to talk about it? And I found myself telling him everything. When I was done, he handed me his hanky and looked at me. I might have a solution for your problem. What? What do you mean? I guess you don't know that Lily's dad and my dad are business partners. They both own that investment company. I'll talk to my dad today and ask him to make the loan payments easier for you guys. I don't want you to lose that bookstore. It seems like it means a lot to you. Do you, do you really mean that? Will your dad agree? He will, I promise. I was so thrilled that I threw my arms around him in a bear hug. He hugged me too, and we just stayed like that for a while. Ryan, did you just smell my hair? What? No, I didn't. Why are you helping me? Because I'm not a jerk. Is that all? Yeah, don't worry. I wouldn't fall for someone who's decided to hate boys for all eternity. Well, maybe I don't hate you. Ryan's face suddenly lit up, and he drew me close and kissed me. And it felt amazing. True to his word, Ryan talked to his dad, and mom was ecstatic when the company told her they changed their decision. And Ryan and I? Well, much to everyone's surprise, and Lily's anger, we started dating. I couldn't believe I had a boyfriend. Prom came around a few months later, and when Bailey and I reached school, I spotted Ryan from afar, looking so cute. I walked up to him and was about to kiss him when he suddenly stopped me. Hey, Alexa, wait, there's something I need to talk to you about. Okay, why the serious face? He led me out of the hall and then he spoke. Listen, I hate that I'm ruining prom for you, but I just have to tell you now. Um, our company is facing some losses, and Lily's dad is insisting that we collect all outstanding loans. So, I'm afraid your mom will have to make the full payment very soon. I am so sorry. I felt the ground slip beneath my feet. Are you kidding me? You promised, and now you're just breaking it? Just like that? It's not my decision, Alexa. I don't own the company. Then maybe it wasn't your promise to make either. Did you just do it to get together with me? To win me over? And you never really meant it? What are you talking about? Of course I meant it. I tried to help you. Can't you at least see that? No, all I can see is that you gave us false hope. I would have been better if you hadn't. Why is everyone so disappointing? Well, maybe your standards are too frickin' high. Well, maybe I'm just better off alone. I stormed out of there in angry tears. I'd made a mistake believing a stupid boy and even a bigger mistake of falling for him. High school had come to an end, and Bailey and I helped mom pack up the store over the summer. It broke our hearts to lose it, but there was nothing we could do. One day as Bailey and I were going back home, we walked past a cafe where I spotted several kids from school, including Ryan and Lily, and she was clinging onto his arm. Bailey saw my face and said, You don't know they're together, Alexa. I'm pretty sure that they are, and I really don't care. I went off to university to study drama and theater, and I was having an amazing time. I made loads of cool friends. Yes, even guys. And I realized I'd been foolishly stubborn to think they were all bad. Sometimes, I even regretted being so hard on Ryan and driving him away. He was just a high school kid like me back then, and it wasn't his fault that we lost our bookstore. Soon after graduation, I went back home to attend Bailey's wedding. Her husband seemed a lot more sensible than dad, and she seemed really happy, and I was happy for them. Later that night, someone rang the doorbell, and I was shocked when I opened the door. Hello, Alexa. Standing outside was Ryan. Um, hi, w what are you doing here? I've been in touch with Bailey. She said you were coming back for her wedding. I really wanted to talk to you. I stepped out onto the porch, and he said something completely unexpected. You know, I never forgot about that burn scar on your back. My scar? 
that's what you want to talk about? Yeah. I've never stopped thinking about how you saw yourself with it, or how painful it must be for you. I found an amazing skin surgeon, and he can fix it, Alexa. And if you agree to go for it, I'd like to pay for the surgery. But why are you doing this? I swear, I'm only doing it as a friend. I know I let you down all those years ago, and now that I can make some decisions on my own, I want to do this. I stopped being mad at you a long time ago, Ryan. You don't have to do this. I want to. Please, don't say no. After a lot of thinking, I agreed. I underwent the surgery a week later, and when I woke up, Ryan was by my side, smiling. The doctor said it went great. I can't thank you enough, Ryan. I really owe you. No, you don't. Well, I'll accept a cup of coffee. It's a date. Is it? Maybe. I sat up in bed and pulled Ryan towards me in a hug. 